In our last video, we looked at strong basic emotions, the kind of emotion one might feel when frightened by a snake. But most emotions aren't like that. Most emotions are milder and tempered with other things. Suppose, for example, that you have been under a lot of stress at work or school. That stress has complex origins that relate to your standards, desire to succeed, ability to do the work, regard for your boss or teacher, and also to overwork competing interests and so on. This stress could show up emotionally as background irritation, discontent, and grumpiness, and it could also have implications for your dreams. The background causes of these feelings are a lot more complex than simply responding to a snake. They are also a lot more common in our lives, and they more accurately reflect the sorts of events likely to rouse both secondary feelings and emotions. So it's not surprising to find that in fact there are extensive brain circuits tied to emotions that relate to complex thought. The brain areas responsible for most thought of this sort are the frontal lobes of the cerebral cortex, especially those forward portions of the frontal lobes intimately connected to the thalamus that are known collectively as the prefrontal cortex. While their activities involve extensive coordination with other brain areas, these prefrontal regions are home to various thought-related processes including direction of attention, brief holding of information in working memory, and decision-making. To locate these activities a little more precisely, many of them occur on the top dorsal area and sides lateral area of the prefrontal cortex in an area known to brain science as the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. That is, many of these executive functions occur in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex or else they require the use of brain circuits involving the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. But how do these activities get tied to emotions? It turns out that an impressively large but different part of the prefrontal cortex is dedicated to this job. That area, on the bottom, ventral, and middle, medial portions of the prefrontal cortex, is known as the ventromedial prefrontal cortex. We don't know all the things that the ventromedial prefrontal cortex does, but we know it performs three basic tasks. First, it closely monitors a wide range of information coming in from your body and brain that collectively indicates your emotional state. Second, it works with other prefrontal areas to compare these emotional data with other information being analyzed by prefrontal thought processes in order to assess what information is emotionally relevant and which of various emerging plans of action are emotionally viable. And third, it relays relevant or possibly relevant results of prefrontal processing to the amygdala, to other emotion generators, and to other brain areas. In sum, the ventromedial prefrontal cortex plays a key role in monitoring emotion integrating emotional and logical analysis in the prefrontal lobes, and forwarding the results of such analysis to other brain systems responsible for modifying current emotions or creating new ones. What all this implies is that emotion and reason don't work in isolation. They work together. In fact, they are as intertwined as the stripes on a barber pole. What's more, they need to work together, because if either is neglected, the results suffer. Common sense tells us this. Don't get overwhelmed, we tell someone in danger of being overcome by emotion. That's usually good advice. Because if you do get overwhelmed by emotion to the neglect of reason, you're likely to, quote, do things you regret later. All this is so well known as to be enshrined in these and other cliches. Stay calm. Watch your temper. To a point that nearly everyone, including the vast majority of us who do get carried away at times, realize that pursuing emotion to the neglect of reason can yield 
poor decisions, and sometimes disastrous results. But neglecting emotion is bad too. Common sense doesn't always tell us this because we have come to regard pure reason as desirable. But we are finding out through science that pure reason, like pure emotion, fares poorly. The prime scientific evidence comes from people with damage to the ventromedial prefrontal cortex. These people are emotionally impaired, having feelings that tend to be limited or short-lived. That's no surprise. But their thought appears unaffected, so it is quite surprising to find that their decision-making ability is crippled. The most famous example of this dis disability was provided by a man named Phineas Gage, a railway man with a promising future who suffered severe brain damage when a gunpowder-propelled tamping rod smashed through his head. Miraculously, Gage survived with most of his faculties intact. But his emotions were rendered primitive, his personality changed, and his ability to make good decisions foundered. Like others with damage to this part of the brain, he became pathetic. Unable to stay employed, alienating his friends, and spending his days bumming about from one bottom-of-the-barrel job to another. This is just one piece in a large tapestry of evidence indicating that human decision-making deteriorates dramatically when the prefrontal lobes cannot register emotion. We can go further in exploring this relationship between emotion and reason. We can look at the evolutionary basis for this relationship. We can give some real-life examples. And we can consider what happens in the brain when an emotional event occurs. These matters are taken up in my next video, the last one in this series on emotion.